afternoon everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about uh, silicon rolls for cake decorating. It's a way of decorating that I've been using for quite a while and I thought I'd share with it with you today on Facebook Live. So do say hello and tell me where you come from. Today in the UK it's quarter past five British summer time and it's anyway here in Shropshire it's a very humid, very hot sticky day and my cakes are not liking it at all everything is perspiring should I say and I've got some examples to show you in a little while um, but do say hello and where, tell me where you've come from uh, I can already see there's quite a few of you online so thank you and I love to see all the likes go across the screen so do add a few of those if you want to so today's all about modeling we oh, sorry mold molds and using the right sort of paste so I'm going to talk about that in a moment and in front of me here, I've got a little cake. Um, as you can see, it's got some chocolate ganache uh, dribbles down the side, and I've used a few uh, little molds on the top here just to make these little flowers because they're so easy and quick. And in no time at all, you, you know, have some really fast, quick decorations that look really effective. Ah, oh, we've got some people. Hello, Victoria from Sheffield. Fantastic. Oh, South California. Wendy, hi. Morella from Austria. Fantastic. I've been trying different um, times of day and I find I'm getting different people at different times, obviously, from around the world. We've got Leslie from Spain, um, Zeph from Far... Oh, it's hot in Farnborough too. Yeah, it's... Oh, dearie me, it's not easy here at the moment. Um, unfortunately, we don't have air conditioning, um, most of us. I do have a dehumidifier, which I do put on, but I've got cakes everywhere, so I've only got uh, one dehumidifier, so things don't help very much. Hi, Anna from uh, Texas. Fantastic. I bet it's hot with you too. And we've got Natalie from Grantham. Fantastic. Oh, it's lovely to see so many of you on here. Right, what I'm going to do first is show you um, where I first started with using moulds, because initially we didn't have moulds when I started. I started cake decorating 25 years ago. And there weren't such things back then as, uh, you know, food grade silicon moulds. So I first saw them probably, I think, if I remember rightly, when I went to ISIS convention in the States, in the sort of late noughties, I think. Because what I did was I saw these amazing moulds and thought, um, I'd like to use them, but I didn't quite know how or when. And then my publishers said to me, Lindy, we'd like you to do a cupcake book, please. And I said, okay, cupcakes, you'd never tend to make one cupcake, do you? You make a whole batch of cupcakes and you need a quick way of decorating them. So I thought moulds would be ideal. So I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to show you my cupcake that we can show you where it all started for me. I'll just say a few more hellos first. Hi, Bev. She's from sunny, hot and sunny Gloucestershire. And we've got Karen from Gibraltar. Wonderful. And... Uh, Julie's from Abu Dhabi. Oh, fantastic. It must be very hot and humid with you too. Yes, I guess it is. Right, I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to show you the first book that I wrote when I was using the moulds to start with. So bear with me. Oh, got to flip it. It takes a little while. Here we go. This is my Bake Me Amuse Cupcake Celebration book. It was in the early days of cupcakes, really. It was published in, I think it was 2010. So I was creating it in 2009. And um, as you can see on the cover, we've got buttercream. Um, and then I'm going to flip a few pages because I put some tabs in to make it easy for myself. Here we are. Here's one, uh, some three little cupcakes. They're all covered with chocolate ganache initially. And then, as you can see, there's a few flowers on there. And most of those are done with moulds. And they're really, really effective and simple. And the same moulds being been used on these ones. And so these were the sort of first ones I did uh, with the moulds. And I just loved it and I experimented a little bit more. So I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to flip the camera and tell you about how I use them. Okay, so back to me again. Right, the, the type of paste I'm using is not straight sugar paste because what will happen with that is it tends to break in the mould. And you'll find that if you're doing um, a delicate uh, shape with lots of, sort of intricate pieces, you'll find that the sugar paste just sticks inside the mould and that's no good for anybody. So what I do is I add some either gum track or some CMC to the um, sugar paste. And proportions are about 
a teaspoon um, to eight ounces, 225 grams, which if you want smaller um, amounts, it's usually about 50 grams, two ounces to about a quarter teaspoon. Now it very much depends on the sugar paste that you're using and also the climatic conditions because here at the moment it is so humid and horrible that actually you'll need a bit more CMC uh, or gum drag in the paste itself. Uh, so I'm just reading a few messages. Uh, how do we get your book? I will give you a link at the end, Jimmy, uh, to the book. Uh, hello from uh, Taiwan. Hello, Kelly. That's a long way away. And uh, Anna says she's got my book. It's one of the first that she purchased um, when she started baking. Fantastic. It's lovely to know you've all got it. It was, it was a fun book to do because it was quite a quick book. It's got lots and lots of examples in it. Um, but it, I didn't have to write lots of instructions, which for me was a nice change, should we say. Um, so where was I? But I was talking about the, the actual paste itself. What you need to do the, um, is add either gum trag account or CMC. Now there's a little bit of a difference. I prefer gum trag. Now gum trag account, it's a proper name, is the powdered sap of a tree from the Middle East. And what uh, you do is you basically just knead it, it's a powder, you knead it into the paste. And you need to leave it overnight because it takes a little while for the gum to react. The alternative, of course, is CMC, which is the artificial substitute that's been mass produced for us. And it almost acts immediately, but I usually say about five minutes to give it its full strength. You can use one or both. Um, I tend to use gum trag when I'm being organised because I prefer it because it gives a stronger icing um, or modelling paste. But I use CMC if I want to do something very quick, I want just a little bit, uh, and that helps, you know, if you haven't planned ahead, which not everybody does, and I must admit I don't always either. I will post the recipe afterwards as well, so you don't have to make notes or anything. Right, let's um, show you some of the moulds that I'm using. Now, there are all sorts of different moulds out there, and since um, I wrote this particular book, there have been so many added into the market. There are different brands, different names, um, and different types, of course. The, the choice is huge, and how they react, how you use them, I think um, varies too, depending on the type of mould. Because some are quite soft and flexible, and some are quite hard. Um, I've got some of my favourites over here, so I'm going to flip the camera again, and I'm going to show you um, those. I've also got some of my cakes to show you as well, when I've, where I've uh, used them. So be patient, and I'll, I'll get there. So I'm going to flip the camera and show you some of my favourite moulds. They're the ones I use in my books and on my cakes. So just bear with me again. Oops, we'll get there. I'm learning about this Facebook Live. Okay, so this is a beautiful rose mould. It's called Roses Galore and it's actually an American mould. It's um, made by First Impressions. And my, in my personal opinion, I think they are the best moulds. They're beautifully flexible. Let me just pick this corner up. You'll see it's lovely and flexible. And beautifully detailed, there's a lot of detail in each rose, and of this particular set, the um, each rose is different, which I think is absolutely fab. I actually made one earlier, which is over here. Um, you can see it's perspiring, it's because it's so hot and humid here that even the modelling paste is suffering. Now, the ones that you saw in the cupcake book is that particular one there, it's a lovely large daisy. This is a really nice set again, it's full of lots of different options. Um, there's sunflowers in here, there's tulips, there's a rose, there's a iris and all sorts of different flowers which I think are gorgeous. Now moving on to, now this is an alphabet mould. Now alphabet moulds, um, they are uh, a company that's now based in Austria. I've noticed the connection's weak so I'm not sure you'll be able to see uh, these moulds. I'm going to might flip back to me so that uh, you can hear my voice because I know that when uh, we lose connection what actually happens is you can still hear but you can't see the picture particularly well so I'm just going to flip back there we go and if you want to ask me questions while we've got hopefully the wi-fi connection will come back again ah I think it's come back can you see me again properly excellent somebody said uh, Samantha says thank you I'm really enjoying I really enjoy joining you I enjoy you being here too uh, Claire says she can't see. I know I, the connection was weak, so it, the picture disappears, um, which is a real pain. I thought I've, I've solved it by getting a, a Wi-Fi extender, but I think because of the humidity here, we get our internet by satellite, so I think it's playing up a little bit with that. Uh, Kelly says, cool. 
Right, I'm going to get flip. Now we've got the signal back. I'll flip back to the moulds again, and um, we will see if we can see something. So, yep. Yeah. There's always a time, slight time delay. Candy. She's saying she can't see. It's very blurry. Yes, that's because it goes pixelated when the signal goes. Um, I'm afraid it's the way this Facebook Live works. Can you see now? Is what I want to know. Can somebody send me a thumbs up or something so I know you can see? Yep. Literally just bought one. Okay. <laughs> can we purchase these moulds through you? Says asked Jimmy. Yes, you can. Everything I'm showing you, we have. Maybe put them up to the camera. Um, hopefully, you can. can you see them now? Animal moulds. Somebody says yes. We have. Let me show you. I'll continue showing them. Right. This is an in the garden one. And this one I love. I've used it particularly. Nope, there we are. And we've got a summer bugs one, which is really fun. Another frog one, because again, that's a, a um, al oh, first impressions. The light white ones, alphabet molds, and the blue ones are first impressions. And more of the, the flower ones. And there's a giant daisy, which is great. And some little daisies, which I'm going to show you on a cake in a moment. And then we've got some of the chrysanthemum ones, which I've put here because obviously we're coming to autumn. So I thought chrysanthemums would be rather nice to show you. Simple bows, because bows are always fantastic for cupcakes and putting things together. And then I've got one of Karen Davis's moulds. And this one I love of hers because this one is the brooch mould and it's got some really intricate details. Karen's moulds are a little bit um, heavier and they're not so flexible. If I pick a corner up, you could, it is flexible, but it's not quite as flexible as the um, the first impression ones. Now I'm going to just go over here because I've got my colour book. Now for those of you who've got my colour book, the UK version has this title um, for a cover. The American one has my owl on the front, so if you're from the States you might know it by the owl and what I've done here is I've made some examples using some moulds so all the colours because it's all about colour this particular book and I use examples by using moulds so I hope you like those it's just that's a little frog isn't it sweet and it's a little um, shoe and buttons those are uh, most of those actually alphabet mould ones um, but do look on our website you'll see we've got all sorts I've just got a small selection here for you. And those are those are gorgeous, aren't they? Those little ones. Little flowers and little trees. Okay, so I'm going to move it back to me. Okay, we've got other people saying they've, fro they've frozen and can't hear me. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Yeah, connection's weak again. Oh, I'm going to have to do this again, aren't I, when uh, my connection's working better. Uh, somebody says, would you dust the mould first? Ah, good question. I don't. I know a lot of people do, but what I find is as long as my paste is uh, firm enough, then it won't stick inside. So I must. you must remember the um, adding the gum to the, to the fondant or the sugar paste, and then you'll find that it'll go straight in and should just pop straight out again. Um, I know people like to uh, put like luster dust and things into like pearl molds. I've got some pearl molds here I'll show you in a moment. And what you can do with that is you can put the luster inside and then you can put the pearls in and they come out already ready lustered for you. But on the whole, I don't. I know some people put a lot of corn flour in their moulds and some of the instructions tell you to do that. But I don't on the whole. I just tend to add the gum to the paste so the paste is really nice and firm um, beforehand. Now I've got some paste here. So, oh, there we go. And I'm going to just knead it uh, and pop it into a mould just to show you. And hopefully my connection will stay. It seems to be okay at the moment. So I'm going to roll this into a ball. And I'm going to pop it into this mould here. I'm going to maybe I'm going to move this little cake. And then I can put, push it up to the camera that way. Okay, so let's see if we can do this this way. Okay, there we are. So what I'm doing here is just popping this in. Oops, because it's so hot it's sticking to my fingers. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. Nice and firmly, so that's in. Now, if I've got excess paste on there, literally just take a palette knife and take off the excess. And then, oops, and I'm just going to, is it high enough? Then I'm going to flip. Oops, I've got to practice this, haven't I? <laughs> anyway, that's a little, the little rose that I've made just by popping it in. Now, I'm going to flip the camera and show you these mold, um, pearl moulds. Let's move that little cake out of the way because I adore these pearl molds and I've got a cake over here that I've um, made, uh, sorry, used making it, so bear with me. Oop, it's going to work, 
I know it's going to work. <laughs> Here we go. Right. So there are. I've got three sizes of pearl molds, and I've used loads of different makes, but I find these are the best. These are the first impression ones. You've got some really tiny ones, which are fantastic for using on cupcakes. You've got medium-sized ones, which I use in quite a few of my books on cakes. And there's some really lovely, chunky ones, um, which I think are really great. Actually, I've got a picture over here, which I will just uh, bring in. Again, it's from... Um, my colour book and that's this cake here hopefully you can see that hopefully the connection's okay and I've used lots of different sizes of pearl moulds round the bottom of each tier right I've got a question here how long would you leave the paste in the mould um, mine got stuck and broke I don't leave it in there any length of time at all um, I made this literally just before we went on online and you can see it's still soft and I literally just popped it in, uh, I can't do it one-handed unfortunately, popped it in, just pressed it down, took off the excess with a palette knife and then literally just the trick with these is actually to, to flip them on their side so you flip them out like that, then they don't break. If you try and um, get them out by doing it that way then the pearls tend to break so the trick here is to just flick it that way so they release more easily. Right, what I'm going to do is flick, um, now I'm not going to go up here to this cake, Ooh, there we are, and this is from my colour book too, and as you can see I've got uh, some pearls, a line of pearls on here. Now this cake has seen better days, it's quite old now, but I thought I'd get it out today just because you can see some little details on here, and I'll flick, turn it round, so the moisture has affected it, everything is incredibly soft. But uh, and some of the colours are running too but the, you get the vibrancy of the design here uh, I posted a picture up on Facebook earlier today of the cake um, before it had dis um, been attacked by moisture and aged because unfortunately that's what happens isn't it cakes, sugar doesn't last forever okay now I've got another cake over here which I'm going to share with you and this one's from my latest book which is Simply Modern Wedding Cakes and this is really what started off um, the idea for this because I had two students in last week and they just fell in love with this cake. So those are the simple moulds that I've used to decorate. And this cake was inspired by a catwalk dress. It was something I saw in Vogue magazine, uh, straight off the catwalk. And the top of the dress had lots of embellishments similar to these flowers, which are using them, all the moulds I've shown you just now. And down the bottom, I've used a simple stencil, which I've cut into square. Basically, I've stenciled flat on with modelling paste. And then I've used a square cutter and cut out squares. And then attached those to the side of the cake. And then I've just simply piped around the bottom. So you get the whole of the cake. And instructions for that are in my Simply Modern Wedding Cake book. The focus coming back. There we go. Uh, excellent. Right, I'll flip the camera back to me again. Okay, I'm back again. So that gives you some examples of what you can do with your moulds. As I said earlier, it saves you a lot of time um, because, you know, to make beautiful handcrafted flowers, although they're lovely, take a huge amount of time. And if you've got to make a cake really quickly or you've got to make a huge batch of cupcakes, then I think moulds can sometimes be a really good answer. I mean, obviously there are other solutions as well, but moulds, you can add colour, you can add texture, and I think that's really, really lovely. Now, do any of you have any questions for me before I sign off today? Uh, we've got some thank yous and some beautiful, amazing, thank you for the lovely comments. I will pop on afterwards and give you those links I promised. I'll also answer any more questions that any of you have. And I hope you're not struggling too much with all this humidity. Okay, we lost connection there. We are, really are struggling today, aren't we? Um, I'm going to show you this lovely little heart that I made earlier with the uh, heart mold, just if I can. Oops. No, here we are. There we are. Can you see how wet that is? That was made about half an hour ago with modelling paste, and it's just, as I say, perspiring. So we're all struggling here in the UK at the moment. Um, but... There we go. I think this heart's lovely. It's from this little set here, which I don't think I showed you, which is, it's an alphabet mould one. It's a really gorgeous set. Um, 
So just give you a few ideas. So if you're not into flowers, there's, there's always pearls, there's little animals, there's all sorts of fun stuff as well. And lots of other modes I haven't shown you at all today. I tend to use the flowers, as I said, but, um, you know, it's, it's choice is yours. Uh, someone says, please could you repeat what to add to sugar paste so it won't stick to the moulds. Uh, either gum tracker can or CMC. I will post uh, links and information for you um, so I can, uh, you'll have that to hand. Another way of making modelling paste is to mix half flour paste with half sugar paste fondant and that way you get the similar result. Uh, somebody says, would you like to gum using, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand your question there. <laughs> And Angela says, thank you, Lindy. I've really enjoyed watching. And that's wonderful. Yeah, I've enjoyed being, I love doing Facebook Live. So if you've got requests for next time, I'll try and make sure my, my Wi-Fi is connection better, but I can't predict that, I'm afraid. If you've got a, um, a request uh, for what you'd like me to talk to you about, then please let me know. And somebody just says, how would you stick them to the cakes? Well, right now, I'd just put them straight on because the cakes are so sticky themselves. But you could use water, you can use sugar glue, you can use buttercream, you could use chocolate ganache, you can use royal icing, whatever it is that uh, you want to use that will work for you. Okay, thank you, everybody. And remember, you can watch this on repeat if you've joined me halfway through and you can ask me questions whenever you like. So thanks very much and goodbye.